Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Anybody need the Lord up in this place? Amen. If you need the Lord, why don't somebody say hallelujah? Amen. Is there a glory in the house? Come on, somebody say glory. glory. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. Oh, yes, bless his most holy name. Amen. I'm indeed blessed and honored to be here amen. this morning. Amen. 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 But if the truth be told, I am the oldest out of the three of us. Amen. <laughs> but I don't, be, I don't mind being called Dr. Al's baby sister. Amen. 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 And it's just so it's just so grand when God can connect people and they speak it to each other's lives. Amen. Amen. And many folk don't have that. And when you do, you should be grateful. Amen. Amen. So to the Reverend Doctor, amen. Kenneth, amen. Lady Nicole, the first family. Amen. I know we have some Women's Day chairpersons in the house. Amen. amen. And to Deacon Styles, the first fellowship family and friends that have assembled here amen. on this occasion. Amen. amen. Yes, I bring you greetings, amen, from St. Paul Amy Church. Amen. amen. In the great metropolis, I like to say, of Montgomery. <laughs> Y'all know that's not a big city, amen. <laughs> Montgomery, Alabama. But I do want to give a shout out to my sister girl, amen, Rochelle Richardson. Right. She came up with me, amen, from Georgia. And just grateful for how God continues to use both of us, amen, amen. and our family. So she know I love her dearly and all that God is doing, amen, in her life and in her children, in her husband's life. But it's preaching time, amen. And I pray that you would pray with me and we'll stay along the themes of talking about the sisters in the Bible. Is that all right? So we're going to go to scripture is Numbers 27, amen. Numbers chapter 27, and I'm going to lift up verse 1 through 7, and I'm going to read it from the NIV version. Amen? amen, amen. Numbers 27, amen. And it reads thus, the daughters of Zelophehad, son of Ephah, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mela, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Terzah. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eliza the priest, the leaders in the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting and said, somebody say said, Amen. Our fathers died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord. But he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no sons? Give us property among our father's relatives. All right. All right. So Moses brought their case before the Lord. Right. And the Lord said, somebody say say. <laughs> and the Lord said to him, uh, what Salopaha's daughters are saying is right. Uh, you must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. Right. And beloved, for a little while, uh, I want us to reflect on this thought, your voice. Mm -hmm. In light of your theme, amen, uh, her voice thriving for excellence. Uh, let's reflect on your voice. Uh, let us pray. Father, I stand behind this sacred desk. Uh, 
not taking this preaching moment for granted. But I can't preach until the real preacher manifests. Creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. It's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. And the people of God in agreement said, Amen. 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 Your voice, beloved, your voice. Notable poet, playwright, into Zake Shange, she wrote, uh -huh, and I quote an excerpt from her poem. Her poem is called Sorry. One thing I don't need is any more apologies. She says, I got sorry greeting me at my front door. You can keep yours. I don't know what to do with them. They don't open doors or bring the sun back. They don't make me happy or get a morning paper. And she goes on to say, uh, beloved, uh, that I can't get to the clothes in my closet uh, for all of the what? Sorries. Uh, I'm going to tack a sign to my door, uh, leave a message by the phone. Uh, if you call to say you're sorry, uh, call somebody else. Uh, I don't use them uh, anymore. Uh, I let sorry uh, didn't mean to. Uh, and how could I know about that? Uh, take a walk down a dark and musty street in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm going to do it what I want to and I won't be sorry for none of it let sorry sue your soul cause I'm gonna sue mine end of quote beloved Tom the, the, the past few days amen uh, of America amen have been tough amen uh, they, they, they really have beloved uh, a white man uh, with a history uh, of violence shot and killed two African Americans that man uh, it seemed like it was random uh, at a Kentucky grocery store uh, after a failed attempt uh, to barge into come on y'all a black church uh, a self-proclaimed white supremacist uh, mailed 14 working uh, pipe bombs uh, to people who've been criticized uh, by the president. Uh, and Saturday morning, uh, a man shouting anti-Semitic slurs uh, opened fire uh, at a Pittsburgh synagogue, uh, killing 11 people. Uh, three, three incidents happened in 72 hours. And that's hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if such as these uh, have the potential uh, to leave us voiceless, uh, Dr. Ella. I'm speechless. Uh, I don't have any words. Uh, feeling powerless. Uh, it's gone too far. Uh, or there's no turning back from this. Uh, frustrated that this is America. Trying to hope and believe that things can change. Uh, filled with despair. However, beloved, this is not the time to go radio silent. This is not the time to give up. Because some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, uh, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Beloved, if your voice is going to be a tool to strive for excellence, uh, then upon reflection of the poem, sorry, uh, I submit for your consideration this morning uh, that our apologies are insufficient. Oh. Our concessions are only perpetuating a cycle of systematic oppression. Uh, oh our remorse and our regrets are mere lip service, uh, merely supporting the status quo. I'm going somewhere to pray with me. I'm sorry, uh, just won't cut it. Uh, I know I got to press my claim up in here. Uh, today, children can't read. Children can't write. We don't teach phonics. Uh, we don't teach penmanship. Uh, I guess our children have to write an X uh, for their names. Uh, they don't have to bring home to study uh, and even if they have a tablet uh, the majority of them don't even have internet access uh, at home. Don't you know that education uh, is still the great divide between the haves uh, and the have nots uh, no voice uh, I'm sorry uh, just won't cut it. Penal legislation 
now. It used to be three strikes, beloved, uh, and you're out. Uh, now it's more about capital investment, Sister Nicole. Uh, our men and our boys are being targeted uh, as a form of generating revenue uh, for a national prison system uh, that is fueled by private uh, and major corporations. Uh, no voice. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, just won't cut. Nails. You got money for hair. Even the brothers are getting it glued and cracked these days. You got money for Prada, Gucci, Brahmin, Red Bottom, Armani, Burberry, Michael Corey, Louis Vuitton. But you don't have a clue what a 401k, an RA, a stock portfolio, a diversified income stream. No voice. I'm sorry. Just won't cut. Generational poverty, generational addictive behavior, uh, generational curses, uh, passing down a legacy of no hope, uh, no faith, uh, no fight, uh, no action, uh, no persevering spirit, uh, no voice. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, just won't cut it up. Uh, all the young folk in the house, uh, and the young at heart in the house, uh, as Beyonce would say, sorry, I am sorry. <laughs> Beloved, if your voice is going to be a tool yes. to strive for excellence, yeah. then I'm sorry, just won't cut it out. You see, there's a contagious disease of apathy today. Uh -huh. You see, we've yeah. taken the hymn, uh, uh, lyrics, uh, whatever my lot uh, thou hast taught uh, me to say, it is well, uh, Dr. L, I believe we've taken uh -huh. that hymn uh, to a whole nother level. Uh, when I reflect uh, on the persevering spirit uh, of our ancestors uh, and what they endured uh, and what they Beloved, some of us have forgotten that we've come this far by faith, leaning and depending on Jesus. You see, the truth, the truth of the matter is that God has never failed us yet. And over the centuries, we made significant strides, but today, Oh, 
their behalf. Come on. In Numbers 26 uh, in, in verse 2, this is what you discover uh, that God called Moses uh, to take a census uh, of the new generation uh, that was born in Israel because uh, there was a back beloved to, to enter the promised land. Yeah. But the census uh, was only going to capture the names of the males uh, who were the head of the tribe, the clan, and the stamp.
in their faith uh -huh. protected them uh -huh. against their fear. Uh -huh. but, but let's analyze uh, what this text reflects about these women okay. since it's Women's Day, amen. amen. So, so, so well, let me, the truth be told, uh, women have a natural uh, propensity uh, to be highly influenced uh, by our emotions. Uh, you ain't got to agree, but I know I'm right with you, amen. Now this is a teachable moment. So these ladies, beloved, uh, they did not approach uh, the powers that be uh, with Negro. Can you read that in the script? They didn't approach uh, the powers that be uh, with fast talking. Uh. They didn't approach uh, the powers that be uh, and said, I'm about to cut back on you and get you to about your voice, yeah. uh, the way you speak, uh, and your speech, uh, and how it affects how we're seen uh, in terms of our personality, yeah. and our emotional state, uh, and even our professional competence. Yeah. Don't you know folk judge you? Uh, yeah. Hey! Yeah. Amen. Why don't we speak using our brain? Well, and our words, yes. and not our hands, right. and our fists. Yeah. Right. We don't have to come up with crafty and cunning measures to try to outwit or be slick or have one up on somebody else. These sisters knew the law. Yes. These sisters knew their history. In other words, lawyer, that was their evidence. Hey, hey. <laughs> Uh, to speak about the omission uh, of justice uh -oh. and equality uh, in God's law. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the Hebrew law, y'all. Uh -huh. So they spoke up, uh, but when they spoke up, uh, they spoke with purpose. They said, give us property mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. along with our relatives. That's right. Uh-huh, see some of y'all would have been worried about the relatives. Cause you just worried about me and mine and nobody else. But they say give us property along with our relatives. So the Bible tells us that Moses bought their case before the Lord. In other words, Moses didn't dismiss them. He didn't tell them to go sit in the corner. He didn't tell them to go back to their tent. Some of us have been regulated 
to sit in the corner and you've been boxed in, amen, and you've gotten to a place that you just feel, amen, that you can't do no more than what your eyes can see. And all your eyes can see right now is the top of the box because you've been regulated to stay in the corner and don't you move. But if your voice is going to be a tool to strive for Because your vote mm, Come on. is your voice. Yeah, yeah. All over the nation. They talking about November the 6th. Can't go nowhere. Everybody talking about November the 6th. But what is November the 6th? That's your voice. Mm. Come on now. Take some action. Love to say the child can't read when you let a child read to you. Mm. So let me tell you something. You told me that ain't my child. I ain't got to worry about that. But that child you're not worried about, they're going to play with your child. Yeah. And it behooves you to let that child know just as much as what? Your yeah. child. They're, you'll get that when you go home. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Come on now. You got to take some action. Because yeah. no investment, uh, no return. Right. You got to take some action. Now. Right. You got to change the trajectory uh, uh -huh. of your life. Uh, yeah. But you got to take some action. Uh -huh. You got to stop apologizing uh, for what you cannot do. Because uh, I'm sorry, just won't. My fear is that we have forgotten Come the theology of our ancestors. Amen. Somebody said, what's that? I ain't going to let nobody turn what? Me around. That's the theology, beloved, of our ancestors. But have we become too sophisticated, Dr. L, for liberation theology, beloved? I'm talking about a theology that declares of the cross. Amen. Beloved, the cross is the most empowering symbol of God's loving yes. solidarity yes. with the least of these. Well, yes. The unwanted well, who suffer daily from great injustice. Well, those who have been discounted, well, counted out, yes. dismissed, well, misunderstood, yes. the reckless, the wounded, the mistreated, the walked on, and the walked out on. Yeah. Beloved, the late liberation theologian James Quan, I am going to quote him. Uh, he says, this is a theology that comes from slaves, sharecroppers, janitors, and maids. That was why most people thought it could not be important uh, theologically or intellectually yes. because they felt like this came from the least of these. Uh, but let us not be so wise and uh, on our high horse uh, because we got a few letters behind our names uh, that people can't speak up into your life uh, because God can use anybody uh, to speak up. That ain't in my nose either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved, Amen. we need to move beyond rhetoric. You know, we, we do that rhetoric thing. Yeah. And that rhetoric becomes your voice. We got to move beyond philosophical uh, discussions uh, using big words we don't even know how to spell. Amen. 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 Because that becomes your voice. We gotta you move beyond political songs, stone walls, uh, and sidebar conversations, uh, because then that will become your voice. Uh, but we need to put in a good day's work uh, toward realistic, concrete, life-changing solutions uh, that address the root causes of ignorance, poverty, violence, and hatred 
and that will become your form. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm about to close in a minute. Take your time. When I, when I said I mean that, I mean, I, I'm not the 45 minute preacher. It's been about 25 to 30 minutes in that's it. Amen. But beloved, even Jesus had a social justice theology. Amen. And I know I'm in Bible country, so I got to press my claim. Amen. For Jesus declared that the spirit of the Lord is on me. Amen. Because he has anointed me Amen. to proclaim good news to the poor. Amen. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners Amen. and recovery of the sight for the blind, Amen. to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, don't allow doubt, fear, the agendas, uh -huh. personal platforms, uh -huh. and politics of others dismiss your voice Amen. or even paralyze you from believing that everything is possible for him who what? Believes. Amen. You see, too many of us are falling into a spiritual trap of self-limiting belief. Uh -huh. What do I mean about self-limiting belief? You're imposing limitations on yourself, limiting yourself, not believing that you serve a God that can do anything but fail. You don't believe that God has no respect of a person, that what he does for one, he can do for another. But you need to believe that if God is blessing her, that means he's in my neighborhood. So I might as well give him praise. I might as well magnify his name. Because my change is about to come. But look at the world says that the odds are stacked against us. But greater is he. <laughs> you gotta personalize that thing. That is in what? Me. Hey! And he that is what? In the world. You have a voice. You have power. You have Holy Ghost power. How can I say that? If you say you're a Christian, that means you accepted Jesus as your personal savior. The Bible says that when you accept Jesus as your then you receive the gift, come on y'all, of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not to make you feel good, to make you shout, to make you dance. The Holy Ghost gives you wisdom, gives you insight, it comforts in the spirit of truth, and it brings stuff back to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost will pray for you, but you got to use the Holy Ghost in you. Just ask the same. The one who bled and died. The one who bore your stripes. But the one who rose in three days with resurrection power. Just ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to what? Aid you. He will what? Carry you. Last thing I'm going to say. I see some of my millennials. Think it's style, they didn't catch that. <laughs> so beloved, Donnie McClurkin put it this way. Uh -huh. He said, speak to my heart, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Give me your holy word. Uh -huh. If I can't hear from you, mm -hmm. then I know what to do. I won't go on my own, Lord. Well. I'll never go what? On my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. But he said, speak to my heart. He said, keep on talking. Talk to me. Just keep on talking. Talk to me. Talk to me, Lord. Speak to my heart. Tell me what to do, Lord. Not my will. Hey, but your will be done, Lord. Lord, if I commit my plans to you, I know they're 
gonna succeed. Uh, Lord, I realize now uh, that life and death uh, is in the power of the tongue. Uh, God, I gotta be mindful uh, of what I speak over my life uh, and what I speak over my children's life, uh, what I speak over my spouse's life, uh, what I speak over my community, uh, and what I speak over the nation. Uh, Cause life and death uh, is in the power of the tongue. Uh, so speak uh, to my heart, Lord. Uh, have your Amen. 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 Amen.